Now, landscape photography isn't something that can be easily learned overnight. We all make tons of mistakes when we're new. In this video, I wanna show you guys five really common mistakes that I was making when I was a new photographer with some example images to help you to hopefully overcome those problems. My name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. If you're not, then welcome back. In this video, I've got five different example images that are, to be quite frank with you, they're pretty bad. When I look at them, I'm like, man, I need to just delete that photo because it's it's truly embarrassing that I was once there. But the fact of the matter is that we were all there once when we were beginners. Um, when you're new to landscape photography, there's a lot of pitfalls that a lot of people fall into. I'm hoping that because you're here watching this video, I can help you to avoid those pitfalls, help you to get on the fast track to taking some pretty amazing images. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. I've got my images in Lightroom. I'm gonna show you the problems with the images as well as the fix. I'll show you just a really quick Lightroom edits on some of the things that we can fix. So Let's go ahead and jump right in there. All right, so the first image here in Lightroom, great sunset, um, terrible, terrible edit, um, and really not the best composition either. The first thing I don't like about the composition, you can see this, you can't really tell where this rock ends because there's not good separation behind it, but we're just gonna talk about the edit. The problem on this photo, and the first problem we're gonna talk about, is there's too many global adjustments and not enough attention to detail. The biggest thing that screams at me is this vignette looks terrible. My vignette is actually darkening the highlights in the photo, that is not good. Let's go ahead and look at the raw file here and let's just go through and apply just some really basic edits. I'm gonna show you the quick and dirty, how I would edit this image now that might make it look a little bit better. I'm still not that happy with the composition. That's obviously something we can't change, but we can go through and we can kind of fix this image and make it a little bit better at least um, just by doing a few of these things. Bring that down. You can see I'm just adding a little bit of contrast here Bring those highlights down, bring those shadows up. Might add some vibrance and some saturation. It's starting to look a little bit better. Now the image is still a little bit dark. Kind of want to brighten it a little bit. And this is where we get into needing to use some local adjustments. So if we did the same thing as before, we would come down into the, um, where is it here? The effects, and we would just add a vignette. You can see this is darkening the edge. This is not good. Go in, learn these local adjustments, guys. I'll link a video if you don't know how to use them um, that I have where you can learn how to use them. Nice thing about this is we can use this to make a vignette. We'll go ahead and just invert this. And I know I'm not talking you guys totally through exactly how to use this. If you already know how to use it, great. If you don't, like I said, watch that video and then come back to here. But this is going to help us to create that vignette and then we can actually mask it out of that corner or we can just move the vignette over. So now you see we're not darkening the edge like that. You could use the same thing, grab another radial gradient, come in here, and you could just add a little bit of light. And that would help to make your image kind of pop a little bit more. Maybe add a little bit of warmth in there. Maybe we will go down, where's our dehaze slider? It's hiding down here. Add just a little bit of haze into there. Bring the exposure up. And you could really play with this a lot, but um, you can see just a couple little adjustments and I've already made this photo. It already looks 10 times better. Let's just compare these two. Um, we've got the 2017 edit, too contrasty, too just a lot of things going wrong with it. This one looks a lot better. I would still want to make some adjustments to the sky here to fix that up a little bit, but you can see just in this was probably three minutes, I just kind of slapped that together. So that's problem number one. Now image number two here, um, gosh. <laughs> It actually, I took this five days after I took the previous photo. Um, and I was on, I thought I was on this like hot streak of, oh, I'm getting so many great shots. Um, and this one just honestly just needs to be deleted. It's just not good. The, the main problem with this photo here, um, there's too much blue sky. It's not interesting conditions, too contrasty. There's a little bit we can do in post processing to make this thing look a little bit better. But it honestly is just a photo from a night that I need to delete. I should have probably shot something else, grabbed a telephoto, um, done something like that because it's just not interesting. But um, this is a TIFF here. I don't even know if I still have the raw file. I may have already deleted it, but the main, it's too yellow, first of all. If we were, if we did want to fix this, the rocks are just ridiculously yellow here. Uh, let's 
yeah, you can see just terrible. We could open that up a little bit and kind of fix some of that, but it still doesn't stop the fact, well, there's just too much contrast as well. Let's lower the contrast. There's a lot of problems. It's, it's just one of those images. I think as a beginner, you have to understand and accept the fact that you're going to take some images from some nights where the conditions were just so close. And you can see, I got a pretty good sunset here. I was pretty happy with it, but just all that huge band of blue sky doesn't make for a good wide angle shot. Uh, I shot this one at 17 and it just, just doesn't look good. It's one of those photos that just needs to go in the garbage, which is really unfortunate. I know, you know, especially back then I wasn't doing landscape photography full time. I was doing it as a hobby. I wasn't able to get out that much. I was on a road trip and it was frustrating when I didn't get good photos. But I think if you want to truly create some great portfolio worthy images, you have to understand and accept the fact that you're going to have to hit that trash can button, hit that delete button, get rid of some of those images like this because they just simply aren't good. There's not really much you can do to save it. Now, image number three here, I actually think the edit is not bad. That it's that it's actually pretty good. Um, there is a little too much contrast for me, but the biggest problem this photo has is the composition. The composition is just horrible, um, and it truly ruined the photo. Uh, this was also back 2017, that same year, and I, I have fell into the common trap that a lot of landscape photographers fall into, which is you think... Uh, that you need to have an interesting foreground on every single shot. I walked around here for a while and I finally found this bush that was like blooming these pink flowers. I was like, oh, perfect. Flowers and landscape photography and a cool background and a great sunset. That's the winning combination. Um, this is not true, guys. Don't force it. Don't force those foregrounds because if they don't add to the photo, they take away from it. In this case, they take away from it. I'll show you a few of the problems with this photo as I zoom in. First things first, uh, doing a focus stack here, you can see was like basically impossible. So if you, when you zoom in, there's a lot of issues with those flowers. Um, secondly, you've got the background behind this rock. It's called monkey face in Oregon. Um, I had, I blurred it out manually because in the raw photo, there was like zero separation between this rock and the background because they're both far enough away from the camera that there was no background blur. So I went through and I did some blurring myself, which looks terrible. Um, this photo lacks a lot of natural contrast in the scene. And I don't mean contrast by, you know, the sky is bright and the foreground is dark. I mean, separation between objects. One thing that you'll see in a lot of my recent work, go to my Instagram, go to my website, whatever. You'll see in a lot of my recent work, I love finding natural contrast, stuff that's sticking up into the sky, stuff that has good uh, separation in the foreground. There, you just need some kind of natural contrast in there. It doesn't matter what editing adjustments you do. You can't add that natural contrast back through here. So for that reason, this photo is just a huge strikeout for me. It's another one where, you know, maybe if I was to do this again, I would try and come up and, and maybe shoot where I was standing here and posing for the photo and try and get this rock further up into the sky, try and get less going on in the foreground. Um, so just a lot of things I would probably change about this one. Don't make this mistake of forcing those flowers, guys. Trust me. Don't force a foreground if it's not there. You don't always have to shoot wide. All right, next problem here. You've got oversaturation and a bad white balance. Uh, this is a common problem. I see this all the time. People come to my workshops and just people, anybody, all you just go on social media. You'll see it all over the place. Um, and the problem that photographers try and do, they will use the white balance to try and accentuate or enhance the conditions in their sunset or sunrise photography. On this photo, everything is way too yellow. It needs to be way more further towards the blue. Uh, way more further is not really a word, but you know what I mean. But um, it, this photo is already kind of baked in too far. It's too far gone. Let's go ahead and just adjust um, one image here. This is basically from the same shoot. And what I would do here um, is drop, first of all, the, drop the exposure. You can see there's pretty good color in the clouds already. I didn't need to do all this crazy stuff to make this a really ugly yellow brown color. So you can just come in here, make a few adjustments, grab our tone curve here for contrast, always the best way to add contrast in my opinion. Bring that up a little bit, bring up the blacks point. Sorry, I'm not walking you through exactly what I'm doing here. Hopefully you can kind of just follow along. I don't want to make this about the editing. I want to make it more about avoiding those mistakes. 
You can see we're looking pretty good here and we're actually gonna bring this blue. Now, one thing a lot of photographers might say, oh look, as I bring these yellows up, it makes the sunset really nice. You wanna still have this blue sky in your photo. It kinda helps to show that your white balance is honest. Also, this rock, once you warm this up, you'll see the rock gets yellow. It shouldn't be yellow. The rock should be pretty neutral toned. You can even grab the color sampler and click on the rock. And you can see that does a pretty good job setting the white balance as a little too blue, though. I am going to bring back a little bit of yellow. Probably about right in there is feeling pretty good to me. And I would go in and probably do some local adjustments as well, but you can already see just the different comparison. This is just so much less edited. It's gonna look so much cleaner, so much better. You can add some of this light back in on the left pretty easily with a global or a local adjustment rather. Um, so don't make that white balance mistake, guys. Super, super um, big mistake that I see tons of people making. They try and make the white balance go to work for them to make their image more interesting, uh, more colorful than it actually really is. All right, fifth and final example. I just realized these are all from 2017. It was a big learning year for me, I guess, or I guess now I'm learning from all these mistakes. Um, this photo in theory is not that bad, but when you see the raw file, it is actually pretty bad. First of all, I added this light. You can probably tell. Second of all, I added, I, I basically painted in colors to make it more interesting and more natural or what I thought was more natural. And then I did some warping. You can see I've got this like... Uh, Slenderman type, like ridiculously tall guy uh, in my photo. It's my buddy. The problem is I warped the photo to make it look more interesting to make these walls look taller. This is the raw file here. You can see it's lacking a lot of color. Now, one of the biggest problems I'll show you as I edit this photo, um, and the reason why I added color is because, so I shot an auto white balance. Let's just edit this as if we were, you know, actually editing a photo. We'll add some vibrance and saturation in there. You can see as we do that, um, we still don't have that much color in the scene. Now, because this isn't a sunset or sunrise, on this scene, we actually can make that white balance go to work for us a little bit. What I want to avoid is getting, uh, and I want to warm things up for sure, because the water is too blue. You can see I don't want all this blue on the ripples, um, and the walls are not colorful enough. So that tells me that I need to warm this bad boy up, and we don't want to go too far to where now the water is yellow. So you gotta kinda just do this in moderation, you know, slide it up a little bit. Now I'm also noticing that it's too green, so adding, going towards magenta. Now going towards magenta is also gonna help these oranges kinda to come out a little bit. And I'm just going to keep pushing these until I get to a spot that I feel like is about neutral. Now that's starting to look pretty good to me. I can make some more adjustments here, it might be a little bit too magenta but somewhere in there is starting to feel a little better you could of course go in here with your HSL make some more adjustments to some of these colors you know bring the blues down um, but you can see and it might be a little too warm but you can kind of just see how I can make that white balance work for me when I'm it's not a sunset and I would encourage that but you want to just make sure things look neutral. The water should be neutral toned. The shadows should be neutral toned. You can see they're a little bit warm, so I may even want to cool that down. But knowing that these rocks are actually orange, I'm okay with the shadows looking a little cool because the rocks should be a little bit orange. All right, there's the five common mistakes. I see them all the time. I want to help you guys to not make those mistakes, and I truly do hope that's helpful. Um, if you guys have any mistakes that you see all the time that you think are mistakes, let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, if you want to see some more examples, have any questions about any of these examples, uh, let me know that down below in the comments as well. And as always, please make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Um, it really does help me to grow my page, helps me to continue to provide you free videos. Um, and as you guys may know, I'm providing free videos every single week to help you guys get better at your landscape photography. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I truly, truly appreciate you being here. My name is Austin James Jackson. We'll see you guys next time.